What does everyone get wrong about exercise and fitness? What even is exercise? Why is this the highest trending YouTube topic in a $22.4 billion industry? Why do we need it so badly? I used to have a pretty limited understanding of exercise, especially the science of weight loss, how calories are burned, how people can get in shape and look better. The truth is throwing paint at the wall for your fitness goals won't get you results probably. But if used correctly, different types of exercise can help you get the look that you want and feel the way that you want. And important side note, this doesn't require you to give up your entire life. This is what everybody gets wrong about exercise and how you can fix it to experience results. When I talk about exercise, I don't just mean casually doing exercise from time to time. I also don't mean that I'm talking about just killing yourself in the gym every single workout and having like the worst leg day ever. No, when I say I exercise, I actually intentionally choose what I'm doing day after day. Okay, so there's a bunch of different types of exercises that I consider whenever I'm doing a different type of phase. Now a phase is just a period of time that I'm doing a certain type of workout routine, usually with a goal in mind. So there's three different phases basically. There's a weight gain phase, there's a fat loss phase, and there's a maintenance phase. And I use different exercises, different types of exercises during these periods of time to stick to or work towards a goal. Now each of the different things that you could be using like cardio, walking like I'm doing right now, weightlifting, HIIT training, playing sports, physical labor. These are just a few different of the types of tools that you can use as exercise. Even doing chores outside or in the house, that can be considered exercise you're moving around as opposed to just sitting and playing video games. These are all different tools that you can use in your belt. To fix what everyone gets wrong about exercise, first I'm gonna share my personal approach. I typically create workout plans by dividing them into distinct phases. I'll explain why I've chosen certain exercises and routines for each of these phases as well. But then stick around after that because I'll give some helpful information to help you decide what you should do and eliminate some misconceptions you might have around exercise. During a fat loss phase, here's my strategy that I normally pick. The goal of a fat loss phase is I want to lose as much weight as possible without losing muscle. What I usually shoot for is about 150 minutes of cardio. This is usually on some sort of machine like the elliptical or walking at an incline. Since in my opinion, this burns the most amount of calories without causing the most fatigue. For the first five, six weeks, this is probably the routine that I'm doing. And then at seven and eight weeks into a phase, I'll probably put to like 200 minutes of cardio. I'm also shooting during this time to have about 10,000 steps per day. If uh, I'm not seeing any progress, then I might up it to like 12,000 or 15,000 at some point. I still lift about three times a week doing like a full body workout because then I can hit all the mu major muscle groups and do it consistently. Plus I'm not skipping any day. Like if I skip a day, I still kind of had two days of full body training during the week. What's important during this phase is also keeping your diet in check. You know, I'm having some sort of limit on my calories, but this is kind of my exercise strategy during this time. During a muscle gain phase though, it's a different strategy. So I'm trying to gain muscle without gaining fat. So that means that I'm actually going to go up in pounds usually. During this period, I'm not doing as much cardio. I try and lift five to six times a week and I have a variety of different programs. It really depends on what the phase that I'm trying to work on. So if I wanted focus on my back and get my back bigger, I'm probably gonna have a training plan that emphasizes the back and still touches the rest of the muscles, just doesn't do as much work on them. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm doing a five to six day push-pull legs workout split because I this is my first phase in a bulking phase and it's just a good all-arounder. I can hit each workout twice a week and experience good growth that way. I try and add five to 10 pounds on one to two exercises per week just to see some sort of progress. It doesn't need to be a lot. So if I squatted like 185 for six reps, I might add five pounds the next time. It's not a lot, but add five pounds or, you know, you can go up in reps as well. I'm also still trying to shoot 8,000 to 10,000 steps per day. Maybe I'll do like a sport or something like that. I still like to play basketball in my spare time.
And then the maintenance phase. So the maintenance phase is this glorious time where you can live your life more like this. You're just kind of, you know, maybe fitness is not your priority during that time, but a maintenance phase is great because you're not losing ground. You're just kind of staying where you're at. So with the maintenance phase, you might do a little bit of everything, but you're not so focused on crazy specifics at the time. Maybe, you know, you're having a baby and that's more of your focus right now. You're still getting your exercise on a day-to-day -day basis, but you're like taking a relaxed Sunday. You're not thinking about how many calories you're eating, but you're also just trying to keep your weight about the same. So if you have a day where you splurge, maybe the next day you just kind of dial it back a bit. Okay, continuing forward in the video, let me dispel a few things that I have learned along the way for all of these different forms of exercise that are important for you to understand. Cardio, some things that I have learned along the way. Different types of cardio equal different types of calorie burn. There's this thing called fatigue that happens when you work out. You get fatigued, you get tired. Certain exercises make you more tired than others. So with cardio, what you wanna kind of pick is something that is less fatiguing and burns more calories over time. So a good sweet spot for me is the elliptical machine or walking at an incline on a treadmill. These ones I think have the best amount of fatigue to calories burn ratio because in a half an hour session, I can burn like 400 calories doing this. Some people on the internet are telling you, you don't even need cardio. And I just think this is silly because this is one of the best ways to burn some form of extra calories. Should this be everything you're doing? No, and it's for certain times, but it's important, it's helpful. Should you be doing running while you're doing cardio? No, I, most of the time, unless this is something you're into, by all means, if you're into running, do it. But I would recommend doing something more like a machine, something like the elliptical, something like walking, because it's less fatiguing, which means it won't interfere with your day-to-day -day life, and it's something you can keep up with consistently. It also can help you if you're trying to build muscle, if you do something a little less fatiguing. Let's talk a little bit more about weightlifting. Okay, so one thing that people will sometimes tout is just do all weightlifting. What are you doing? And do as little cardio as possible until the end of like your fat loss phase. And to be honest, one of the things that I have heard out there that has worked better for me is treating weightlifting as a tool to gain muscle and using cardio as a way to lose fat and not to confuse the two. Yes, you could probably do a workout where you're doing something where you're not taking a lot of breaks, like one minute rest times. That's gonna be more cardio intensive. Yes, you are also lifting weights, but you're also getting your heart rate up. The whole point of lifting weights is to actually stress your muscles and make them grow more. Cardio is supposed to help you lose weight. So kind of keep the two separate. I think that's the best way to do it. Building muscle also helps you burn calories later. So the more muscle that you have, the more metabolically active you are or whatever the right way to say it is, but you will burn more calories if you have more muscle. So it's important to do some form of muscle building. The most important thing when you're weightlifting is to get your form right. And I would spend more time on this than trying to lift heavy. You might be thinking, I could, what about calisthenics? If you don't know what those are, that's using your body to facilitate exercise. And you can do this too, but really it's easier to quantify progress when you're lifting weights because you can record it and be like, I lifted 100 pounds this week doing this exercise and the next week I did 110. What signifies growth is you stay the same weight, but you're getting stronger over time. Okay, so HIIT training. This is one that I used to be suckered into. I was doing HIIT training all the time. I do like 20 to 30 minute interval training style workouts. CrossFit is kind of like this. Interval training is another word for it. But basically it's supposed to be really intense, really stop start. And in the moment, yeah, these will burn a lot of calories, but it's kind of the same thing as running. There's a lot of fatigue involved and it's actually more fatiguing to do kind of HIIT style workouts and you have to be careful because you're more likely to injure yourself. Because you're moving so quickly and you're going into these explosive movements, you don't want to get injured whenever you're trying to exercise because that will always pause whatever you're working on. It's going to be really hard to stick to your goals if you keep getting injured. I also don't think that beginners should be doing HIIT workouts. You'll see this a lot when you look up beginner-friendly workouts. It's always interval-style training, but I don't think this is actually super helpful for most people. You'd be better off going to find a sport I like doing sports instead of cardio because I think overall they're more fun. Like who wants to sit in an elliptical all the time and just be pedaling for 45 minutes? Playing a sport is more fun. If you don't like doing cardio, you should find a sport. I have played basketball or pickleball or volleyball or 
you know, I used to disc golf a lot more. I like playing normal golf, probably not as much exercise, but each of these have, you, you can tell how hard you're working in each of these things. Go find a sport that you enjoy. If you don't like doing a rec style league or you feel like it's too much pressure to play basketball, volleyball, or soccer, go do something that's a little more chill, like disc golf, pickleball, things like that. One thing that I want to stress is that harder is not always better. You will see this with people who are trying to get into shape, the New Year's resolution people, you'll go too hard all the time and eventually you're gonna burn yourself out. While it feels good to do things that are really tough, how many days in a row could you keep up the intensity that you're currently doing it at? I'm not trying to discourage you, but be honest with yourself. If it gets to the point where it's exhausting, tiring, it's affecting your normal life, then you're not gonna wanna keep doing it. What's more important is to do things that you don't quit on. For example, if you can only lift three days a week for an entire year, don't try and do six times a week because you'll eventually quit because you're so tired from it or you'll miss weeks or you'll be inconsistent. It's better to do the three times a week the entire year than six times a week for four weeks and then get tired and lose out. The most important thing is find something that you like to do. The whole point of this video and what people get wrong about exercise is that it should be enjoyable. That's how you stick to it. It shouldn't be a chore. Sometimes it can be like doing cardio or lifting weights. Occasionally, yes, you're not going to feel like it some days, but overall, you should enjoy the process. You should look forward to going to the gym and lifting weights. You should look forward to doing cardio. Maybe not immediately, but when you get into it, figure out how you can enjoy it. Find a buddy to go to the gym with you find a sport. You have to figure out how you can enjoy it. That's the most important thing. Everybody has the ability to, I believe, but people don't try hard enough to figure out how they can enjoy it. A few things that I think are important to consider. Do, I already said, do sports instead of cardio because sports are more fun. Maybe you don't like doing squats in the gym. Don't do them. If that's going to prevent you from going to the gym, do something else that you enjoy more, like lunges. <laughs> Ugh, I hate lunges. It has to be something you enjoy because otherwise you won't be consistent. Okay, the biggest takeaway to wrap this all together, intentionality creates results. Consistency wins overall. The fitness industry is full of quick fixes and amazing transformations in a quick time span. It isn't sexy to say that consistency over a long period of time is what makes you a winner, but it's the truth. And being intentional over the long term moves the needle every time, even if it's only barely. If you want to feel like your exercise is moving towards something, towards a goal, then figure out your fat loss phase that works for you on autopilot. That's the most important thing. Figure out how you can get to the gym six days a week if you're trying to build muscle. Be on that sports team if that's what will get you to commit to exercise. Because being healthy and exercising helps us feel good about ourselves, but teaches us discipline and refines ourselves, helping us succeed in other areas of life. To be honest, I didn't always know what I was doing and I learned a lot of these habits the hard way. I think I fell into some of these traps as so many other people getting confused by all the information on the internet. I made a whole video talking about my story. If you're interested in watching that, check out the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.